Greetings, 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 brothers and sisters, men and women all around the world. Welcome to another episode of the Blueprint Reveal. I'm your brother, Fiji. I'm your brother, Blaylor. What's been going on, bro? Uh, maintaining the struggle. You know how I do. No complaints about life. Just watching it live. That's all. Right. You know, it's been a lot going on in the uh, in the news cycle, man, from mm -hmm. uh, the situation with the 215 bodies being found down in uh, Hines County, Mississippi. Matter of yes, fact, sir. we have an update on that, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And somebody asked me to look into Sheriff Malcolm McMillan. So I looked into Sheriff Malcolm McMillan and Sheriff Malcolm McMillan passed away in 2016. Then I, I wanted to find out when were the bodies buried? When did they stop burying the bodies in Hines County? And what I found was it was in uh, 2016, according to uh, civil rights attorney Ben Crump. So they stopped burying the bodies in this uh, pompous mass graves in mm. 2016. Also, what I found out is that I want to give an update on everything is that uh, the persons, the bodies that was uh, that was found, they was either homeless peoples, inmates from other local jails and uh, who relatives had not been informed or they never came and claimed the bodies they had died in jail but people wouldn't come claim their bodies so it was a lot going on and it was also people that was dying you see and uh, their families couldn't afford to come get their bodies so but for all the people who died and uh their families weren't notified these are the ones that's asking for a federal investigation on why they was never notified about their family members dying. So this is a follow-up on what I had already uh, spoke upon about the 215 bodies, but we're going to get a whole lot much deeper into that, you know? And so I just want to say this here to all the people's loved ones, homeless people, whoever they was, all soldiers across the land across america who have passed away you know uh one way or the other we don't choose sides here you know what i'm saying uh plm we are about to struggle so if we lose one brother or sister on the battlefield no matter what particular community they choose to be a part of we are all we are all part of the same community so we're going to give our condolences and we're going to give our peace and our love to all families and fallen soldiers across America. You know? So uh, with that being said, you know, I want to say this here. We got to pay attention to what's happening because we are at a crossroads. We are at a crossroads and we are being distracted with so much nonsense that we can't even see the crossroad. We can't even see what's going on around us. We don't even know that we are at a crossroad. I was just about to say that. You know, and according to the blueprint of a new concept, this. What is a crossroad? Crossroad is a point in life where you have to make a decision. Okay. So. Let's do this here. Talk to me. We're going to add the Forks of Life from Chapter 3 of the Blueprint, the uh, the first printed version. However, I'm going to be reading from the Blueprint of a New Concept. It says, a crossroad. Upon being introduced to the teachers of growth and development, we find ourselves at a crossroad in our lives. Okay, what's that crossroad? Because they say, upon being introduced to the teachings of growth and development, we find ourselves at a crossroad in our lives. Right, so that, that means... Well, I'm uh -huh. about, about to get into it. That crossroad would be uh, we choosing to take a path that's positive and productive for the rest of our lives or we remain in whatever condition we find ourselves in at that moment. Okay, so that's that crossroad. 
That's that crossroad. Okay. It says, under the old concept, the crossroad, the cross forks, represented a negative way of life. Mm -hmm. we, we crossed them up on our chest in order to show allegiance to a gang's turf. We tattooed the cross forks on our arms, chest, etc., in order to show a rebellious, defiant attitude towards society, laws, and rules. We boldly stated that we were outlaws belonging to a criminal mob. This is the old concept. This is that old thought process up under the old concept. So that means that anything before 1981, all right. Many have killed and died representing the negative aspects of the cross forks. Some of us even went as far as to believe that the cross forks were a sign of evil. They are not. However, such a negative view and insane belief justifies our passion in the execution of crime so with this negative insane belief that we have on what the old cross forks record uh, uh represented it's it's like it justified us being rebellious justified us doing crime justifying us killing justifying us dying out in the streets and to to a certain degree that same thought process is going on today because look at our young men and women that's out in the street today. Mm -hmm. They constantly dying, killing peoples. They 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 making these rap songs and they they living out. They living. They literally are living out these songs. That's true. You know, and they justify it by saying it's for the hood or they click. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Same mentality, just a different symbol crossed up says now it's time to turn all this around and live according to the true meanings of the forks of life under the new concept the forks of life represent the physical spiritual and mental sides of man our teachings are universal in the sense that everyone on earth is confronted with crossroads throughout his or her life you would like to elaborate on that bro I would, because I'm going to actually ask you a question. Yeah. And I'm going to ask you based on your history. Okay. All right. I know when you came to the family, it was roughly around the time the transition to the new concept was coming about. Yeah. Okay. So basically, you came in under the old concept, for lack of a better way to describe it. Yeah, I came in in 1978. Yeah. Okay. So in 81, when you experienced the new concept and what they were teaching the cross folks, cross oh cross forks represented. How was that transition for you? Like get, not getting rid of the old meaning, but understanding that what you were taught the meaning was is not what the meaning was intended to be. It wasn't difficult because you got to remember that brothers in my generation. We are we who the new we we are who they was talking about in the new concept. That generation, I, my generation are those 13, 14 year old. Cause now you got to remember in 1981, mm -hmm. I was 14 when the new concept was introduced. So, you know, my brain was still trying to uh organize itself or grow and develop it into the organization. So it wasn't as difficult for me and the guys in my generation to grasp on to the new concept. It wasn't, it wasn't difficult because it was actually hammered in us. It, they had started hammering it in, in us, you know, but from 1981, I didn't really get it until like, 83. We didn't get it to like 83. So we were still running around gang banging. We were still gang banging. We didn't get it into 83. And then when we did get it in 83, we still didn't stop gang banging. 
because our minds wasn't mature enough to understand what the cross forks represented, what the new concept represented, that people that belong to different communities and organizations, they wasn't our enemies. We still ain't understand that. We didn't understand that. You know, so it was, we were still banging all of, let's, let me get this. <laughs> Excuse me. I don't want people to think that soon as the new concept came about, that we just automatically just flourished under the new concept. No, nah, man, that's far from the truth, bro. Even when I wind up going into the Illinois Department of Corrections in 1985, and I was in Joliet, the West House in Joliet, we were still gang banging. And this was in 85. I didn't start getting it until I wind up in Stateville. This is when I start getting it because now we start getting it straight out of the horse's mouth. The horses that had put it out, we start getting it straight out of their mouth. And this when things start to change around. So I said around like 86. When I start meeting the Little Johns, the Bo Diddleys, the Panamas, the Biggies, the Sundowns, the, the uh, 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 G Sharps and uh, Kirk Moe's and all these, the Don Smokies. When I start meeting all these people, that's when it start changing. The Larry Hoovers, the Heads, the Gubs, the Good Time okay. Luckies, that's when it start changing. So, to, to say this properly, when you got to Statesville, and you met the people that helped set this in motion, that's when you developed the spiritual side of who you were, as opposed to the physical side being just man in the streets doing what you do. Yes, that's when it started coming about. But I still didn't even understand understand the, the spiritual sides of it until after I came back to prison in 90 with a 30-year prison sentence. Because when I went home in 1988, I went home and started selling drugs. I was coming into the new concept, but I went home and started selling drugs. Then when okay. I came back in 1990, that's when it started. Yeah. I really started teaching and I was, cause I'm growing now. I've gotten a little older. My mind has become a little more uh, 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 developed. Yes. Okay. So, the reason why I asked that question is I was looking, I was looking at the, the mental and physical side of man, and they don't always grow at the same time. They don't. Like you can physically have a growth, growth spurt at like between 14 and 16 where you just get super tall, but mentally it doesn't mean that your growth spurt happened at all. You can be 21 and still think like a 14 year old. Yes, exactly. exactly. So. With the with the symbol of the cross forks representing a crossroad in life, the mental side and physical side of man, that in essence would be a symbol of a balance, being able to grow and develop mentally and physically simultaneously. Exactly. Okay. Okay. I was trying to make sure I comprehended it right. That's that's why I was asking the question I was asking. Yeah. Uh say, have you ever heard the proverbial saying, a fork in the road? Well, when people use that term, we are talking about a crossroad in his or her life. That's what it that's what that's what it's talking about. You know, so when we start hearing people talking about this, this uh uh, uh this crossroad in our lives, we going through a crossroad right now. We going through a crossroad right now, people in 2024. We have to make a decision. So we bring it to a point. Forgive me for cutting you off, bro. But yes. you made me think of something. This is election year, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. So as a as a people, we're faced with a crossroad of who do we support or get behind in this political time to ensure that all best interests are met. Okay. Mm -hmm. You might be one step ahead. Okay. We're faced with a crossroad. Are, are we going to get up off the couch first? And actually vote. And actually become involved in the process. Uh. Or will we continue to sit on the sideline 
and not have a voice and be their 40 percent apathetic vote. That's that crossroad we be facing first. We got to mm. get up. And I'm finna say it like the brother, uh, Mr. Larry Hoover say, I ain't talking about regular uh, people. I'm talking about the people that's out here in these streets. People that call themselves gangsters. The ones that's calling themselves gangsters. I ain't talking about cause you say you gangsters can be from whatever family you from. Yep. And every family you got people talking gangster talk. That's who we talking about. You can be all the gangster you want out there in them streets. But you know what's going to happen? They're going to lock you up and throw you throw the key away. That's the crossroad we're facing, bro. Do we continue to sit back? Look at the little brothers that just lost. They finna lose their life, man. Up there in Chicago. As they call them, the old block five. Peace yeah, to all the mothers. Peace to all the mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, cousins, and everybody, man, that has lost family and loved ones, man. Peace to the brothers and sisters, man, and that's inside these penal institutions. Peace to everybody, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm not finna speak bad about the about the uh them young men because they lost their life too. Although they might be able to get on the get go in prison and talk to their family and friends on the phone and get money and go to commissary and go to the yard and play basketball and do all that. You are in a box. Back in slavery. And to society, you are dead. Facts. You're dead. And they don't have no intentions on releasing you. And here's something else. The United States Supreme Court, those who think like the, what's her name? Marjorie, Marjorie Green Taylor, Taylor Green, Green Taylor, whatever her name. That she's a, she's a representative out of Georgia. These peoples are really Looney Tune, bro. It's people that, they got six people that sit on the United States Supreme Court that thinks mm -hmm. like them. And they have a super majority on the United States Supreme Court. So now you got to ask yourself, what's the likelihood of people's coming back to court getting out? Well, see, if we're being truthful uh, about it, we live uh, in a society that was built on slavery anyway. Right. And they just advance how they do slavery. Look at the 13th Amendment. Right. Which talks about slavery itself being acceptable if it's for the punishment of a crime being committed. Right. So naturally, a system that's built on slavery, that has reestablished slavery in a legal manner, is not going to try to let anybody free. Right. Their job is to enslave or okay. incarcerate, which would be the politically correct term for it now. Mm -hmm. So which takes my mind to, to a place because growing up, right, we were taught that a gangster is one that can go against the system and survive, come out on top, or go out in a blaze of glory. That's what we were taught a gangster was. But as I got older and began to look at things for what they really are, I realized a gangster is one that can actually establish a working system that benefits his people. <laughs> That's right. All right. Rothschilds. Those gangsters. Facts. Them gangsters, man. See, they can give you some rap money. Then you think you're gangster because you go out and buy you some platinum, some gold, some diamonds. Then you think you're gangster. Then you wind up on a slab dead somewhere. And then people be talking about long live, blase, blase. Mm -hmm. Then you wind up in a federal bureau of prison. Then you go out there, you'll be doing free concerts on the yard on, on the holiday when they got a holiday coming up. You'll get out there, you'll start rapping on the mic. But you got a life sentence. And you ain't left a whole wake of destruction behind. That's that crossroad we at, bro. That's that crossroad we are facing right now. You know, my back, it says... The forks of life represent the crossroad in our lives. 
from the beginning to the end. Growth and development in the beginning of one's life is natural and unimpeded. I got a question. Yeah. For um, my learning sake, unimpeded means what? Unimpeded means is that it's natural. Nothing is stopping it. Okay. Right, there's, nothing, it. There's, there's nothing stopping it. The first, at first, the power to grow and develop is instilled in us and nurtured and stimulated by our environment. The first level of growth and development begins in our mother's womb. The cells join and unfold until what emerges is a fully formed child. From that point, quite naturally and without effort on our part, the various crossroads of our lives succeed one another. Once born, the baby began to focus his eyes, to reach out and touch things, to move things around if possible, making sounds that he discovers cause others causes others to respond like crying for milk or laughing for affection. Soon, he confronts the challenges of sitting up a crossroad, walking a crossroad, and finally talking a more difficult crossroad. All peoples everywhere have had to succeed in the challenges of these crossroads. They are only stages in one's growth and development. Stages that we all had to meet and overcome in order to survive. Remember, we just used the word survival. Mm -hmm. But each time that we approach a new behavior like going from crawling to walking, we are confronted with a crossroad. A point which we have to decide to move forward. Such crossroads continue throughout life and it forms a major decisions and affects our future. One example is when we turn 16 and are confronted with the decision, a crossword road, whether or not to stay in school or when we graduate from high school, the crossroad is whether or not we should go to college. So all of these are crossroads and all of these are basically just like decisions. Mm -hmm. All these are decisions that we have to make in our lives. And stages we got of maturity. Stages of maturity. That's it. Either I do or I don't. These are crossroads. These, okay. This is that cross forks. Okay. So based on whatever decision you make will then determine the responsibility that you have in that stage. Yep. And the outcome that that's going to come in that stage. Because you can make a negative decision and you're going to get a negative outcome. Mm. Excuse me. So this brings me to a question. Uh huh. That being the case, people who are frightened to take on responsibility, when they get to their crossroad, they're going to choose to not mature in order to avoid the responsibility of the next stage of their life. Fear. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's the word I was trying to think of, but I couldn't in the moment. So that fear in turn stagnates their mind at whatever stage of their life or whatever age they're in to where they now become stuck in that frame. Yep. So let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Is fear real? No, it's not a real thing. Fear is an illusion. It is. Danger is real. Yeah. Fear isn't. So when we fear making, when we come to a crossroad and we fear making the decision, is that inherent? Or is that is that nature or is that nurture? No, I'm saying that's nurture. That's a because, learned behavior. Yes, we develop our fears from what people tell us we should be frightened of. Okay. Or it could be a situation that a person ran into in their past and they wasn't prepared to handle it. So when they run across it again, they fear the same thing happening that happened last time. Not so realize that, that you can actually make a decision to face it and not run into that same problem again. So basically, they uh they fail to use their five Ps then. 
because yeah. they already came across this situation and they failed to uh proper uh, uh to use the five p's which is proper preparation prevents poor performance right yeah so now you you facing the same thing again and you scared all over again so you're gonna get the same results that you got before Okay. So in essence, fear is a reflection of insanity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Damn. Never viewed it from that angle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Often, being in jail represents a crossroad. One begins to realize it's time to make a change. But as crossroads go, you are given two paths from which to choose the positive and the negative. You can become deeply enmeshed in the cause in the causes that's landed you in jail, or you can begin to pay attention to that inner voice, your conscience, that is telling you the right way to go. We must realize that when we begin, that when we choose negative over positive, we have to sustain prison as a uh, we help to sustain prison as a big business. Mm. Mm. Yeah. It says, yeah. we must realize that when we choose negative over positive, we help to sustain prisons as a big business. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's check this out. Talk to me. All of us who have a platform out here, right? Mm -hmm. There's many of us who have platforms out here. A lot of us are using our platforms to educate, to teach. A lot of us are using our platforms for other things. Some positive, some negative. Some to eat, to in, to enlighten the community. Some to keep the community in the in the darkness. Right? These are crossroads, bro. When I when I first come home, I had a choice to in a crossroad to make a decision. Do a PLM. Mm -hmm. Do we make PLM positive lifestyle management or do we make it NLM negative lifestyle management? What did we choose to do? We go chose positive. to make, we chose, we chose to go positive. Now watch this. Those who are in the negative side of it, they are receiving all the accolades, all the accolades rep. They get all the views. They get everything, bro. But what are you giving back to the community? Nothing but a vicious cycle. Another vicious death, cycle. Incarceration and recidivism. So I can go on your platform. I know I'm not going on your platform. All I'm going to get is gossip. I'm not getting nothing to enhance me. What if I'm getting to enhance the community? I get on here and I get to talk about this person got murdered. That person got murdered. This person got murdered. That person got murdered. And here's the reason why they got murdered. They got murdered because they into it with rapper um Schoolie, Schoolie, Schoolie School and, <laughs> and Mackie Mackie and Mackie Mackie had sex with Schoolie Schools. Girl, man, what the yeah. hell? So I'm on here. I'm on here preaching. Feeding it, the dragon. Feeding it. I'm feeding this monster. Mm -hmm. Now I got peoples out there They listening to what I say And then we those are entertained to, by it Are going to turn around and talk about it To everybody else that's entertained by it Yes So it begins, it begins to overtake the thought process And once you think something for so long You bring it about It's a natural yes. law of attraction with thought It has to manifest in the physical form so if you put this thought out in the universe, that's what's going to come about. You know? Yep. So if you, we have to use, and, I, and, I, and I'm, I'm making an open plea to all of us who have platforms. Let's change the narrative. Let's change the narrative. Because if we help change the narrative, we can help change a lot of things that's going on inside our communities. Absolutely. We put in a lot of work, bro. Listen, man, I don't watch some of them, these brothers, man, that get on these platforms and that's the, and they teaching this stuff, this negative stuff. Man, they put in a lot of work, bro. 
But they get to taking you back to years, man. When songs was made, this is when it first started. When he dissed him on this song on the low low. Yeah. They be putting in a lot of work. But how much work are you putting in to save us? 